Good evening. I Rapstein of Linen Associates with your Metal Market Wrap Up for this Monday, and we're at the 30. I'm sorry, we're at the 18th. I'm watching Halloween shows on AMC uh, to break my day up. I'm laughing at them. Um, it is not Halloween. It's October 18th, 2021, 6:30 p.m. Central Time. So the metals, we got a pullback today, and that's to be expected, at least I thought it was. I thought we would come back in gold, maybe test that 18-day average of closes and see what's going on. Now, before I get too far into all this, this Wednesday, I'm holding a live webinar. It starts at 12.30 p.m. Central Time. I open it up at 12.15. If you have not received your invite already, if you take your cursor and just move it onto the screen upward, an icon's gonna pop. That icon disappears every 10 seconds. You gotta put it up there to get it again. And once you get it, just click on it, sign up and away you go, you'll get your invite and so on. Write me with the markets, there's my email address and everything in it, of anything you'd want me to cover for you. So I'll do my best to get it ready. Now this will be the last live webinar for a while. It's gonna be about three, four weeks before I hold another one. I've got a tight schedule with a bunch of other things that I'm doing uh, coming up and taking a small break. I'll still, for my paid subscribers, be working, but I'm not gonna be doing these come the very end of uh, October for a little bit, right around that Halloween to frame leaving town for a few days. So. Energy is a little bit of a correction. You know, you did get to $86 in Brent today. You're backing off in the crude and the heating oil. I told my clients, and I don't mind sharing this with you today, take profit day. And, you know, November's going off the board, so let's look at that. You'll, you won't see that again in the crude there. And heating oil time to move to the December. So when we look at the markets on a weekly chart of closes, gold has still not gotten back over the 1783 level, which is a resistance point for it. It can play around all at once here, but it's not throwing out out and out buy signals that it gets over that 18-week uh, moving average of closes. You could see how we pulled back, and when you put on the key numbers, you'll see you still have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, but look where the 18-day average comes in. That number 1767, they haven't quite hit it. You don't have to, you're in a zone of support. What you don't wanna take out is the low back here. If you take out this low, and let's go to that just so you can see it, and that number 1749.90, what happens is you will break the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Now, that means that you're trending at this point. No trend would be a higher high and a lower low. That would get ugly on the chart. We can see that one of the resistance points is the combination of the 200-day average, which is in gray. Green is the 100. And where's that Bollinger Band? Oh, my gosh. That's the resistance point, the real one. So what the market did is it fought a battle there, pulling back to the 18-day average for support. Very typical. And when we throw on momentum, pointing down. But that's not a bad thing here. The market had gotten itself overbought right up through here. Now, as the market's been in a corrective stance, you're no longer in that overbought territory. Should the market be able to hold this and ideally not take out that 1749.90, I think you can get an assault back up to the top part of that band and the 100-day average. Break out of that in time, you could be talking other things. Fail, we got to go back to the drawing board. Then you're just going to say you're caught between the upper band and most likely the lower band for a while still. In the gold-silver ratio, look at how silver is gaining on gold. Remember, the lower the number goes here, the fewer ounces of silver you need to buy one ounce of gold. So when we take a look, silver market, is it embedding? Well, let's see. Both numbers here are over 80 for the first time. That was today. If you go to Friday, they weren't. So you need another day, which could be today and Wednesday, before we'll know if that's going to happen. Right now, what you have is an overbought market that has gone up to the upper Bollinger Band, where the pros, I think, took money off the table. The market, unlike the gold, is overbought, where gold's working it off. Both are in uptrends, and the key numbers are probably the 18-day average of closes to see what they can do with them. In the copper market, you had four days in a row of settlements up and over the upper Bollinger Band. Take a look with me. Do you disagree today? You settled over it, day one. Actually, I think this was day four. Over it, over it, 
over it. And when you come right here, uh, that 432.55 was not. So you had four days in a row over. You rarely get to five. You can do it. You rarely do. You move to the right-hand side. That doesn't mean the market has to break. In fact, I'll be watching here to see what the stochastics do. Right now, you can't count Tuesday night because we don't know how Tuesday's going to finish. But Monday, both numbers are over 80. They were both over 80 on Friday. And they were both over 80 on uh, Thursday. Therefore, you have an embedded reading. What does that mean to me? It means that until the red line closes under 79, I look at this market as being bought by the pros looking for even higher prices. Another event happened. I want you to study the 18-day uh, average in the 100. Notice how you got a bullish crossover. So things on this chart still looking good even at this price level. Yes, you can get a break. Why not? That doesn't mean the trend is over. When we step over to platinum, <coughs> excuse me, higher lows, higher highs, lots of resistance at the 100-day average in the upper Bollinger Band, so you're pulling back. But here, too, I like what's going on. You can't count again Tuesday night's action, so we go to Monday's action right here. Both numbers over 80, both over 80 on Friday. What about Thursday? No, but that means tomorrow, any strong day, you're embedded again. Embedded gets my juices going because it tells me until that's lost, the pros step in and they keep buying. That's what went on in the energy markets, and that was one of the ways to, to play that. When you look at the palladium market, nothing. You've got a higher high, lower low pattern, not the place to be. Dollar index, a higher high, a lower low. Suddenly the dollar's sort of out of favor for a little bit here. And I was surprised today at about, I'm guessing, 8 in the morning or so. I'm watching uh, Bloomberg and I'm listening to what's going on. And there, there was an announcement. Mike came on and said, um, the Fed is buying the long end of the curve yield. So they were flattening things out, and I'm looking at what's going on there, and that impacted the dollar and everything else when that occurred. So quite interesting. I'm going to look into more of that, and I'll be able to report on it with any luck tomorrow. Maybe not. Maybe I'll never understand it. But it's back and forth action right now. And as I said, I'm going to hold the live webinar. That's going to be this Wednesday. Invites have been sent out. If you didn't get it, folks, you're not going to get it. Look in your junk mail. If you're on my mailing list, it might be in there, but that would be the only other way. Just take your cursor, move up, click anywhere. You're going to be able to join by clicking on that right there. Sign up, and away you go. If you want to sign up and get my other emails, you got to go to our website and sign up for free offers at www irapstein.com. If it's easier, my staff will have everything ready for you to go. Call them at 866-973-2077. I'll see you at my next video today, tomorrow, and then I hope at the webinar. Take care.